You must give me both, because I will both of them I'm selling to the mechanic. Can anyone hear me? Hello, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, guys. How are you? All right, and you? Fantastic. All right. So, uh, hi, Janine. Hi, Janine. How are you? All right. Thank you. How's it? How's it? Who am I speaking to? Fantastic. You're speaking to uh, Lebu. So, my thing is written ah, here. Are yes, you the sir. famous Lebu? Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all, Janine. So, Janine, I'm looking yes. for something so that I can introduce you properly once we link to Facebook, you know, and I'm struggling to find something, you know, and uh, so I do not want to shortchange you. Please, can you please send, send me something quickly? You can even send it here on the chat. Just then I'll copy it. So you weren't sent my profile because I sent them my profile. I sent everything beforehand. Was nothing shared with you? I have the questions that you sent, but I do not have... Like the, the mm -hmm. one thing I have about you. So can you send me a WhatsApp quickly and I'll send it to you on WhatsApp? Okay, let me do that. Um, at least you've got it in front of you. Yeah, I sent it all beforehand. I did all. all, right. all the, yeah. Let me see. Uh, what is uh, your number, Janine? Sure. 082. 490. Okay. 082-490. 0960 4900960 fantastic all right let me just send you a whatsapp quickly label thank you and then i feel more comfortable as well i've got it for you awesome and then um leslie let's check your sound quickly can you hear me sorry i'm doing headphones here because my computer audio is really bad no, no, this is better. This is better, actually, because uh, sometimes the headphones do eliminate the, what you call it, the, other, the background noises. So I think that sounds very good. And then awesome. uh, let's uh, test with Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, can we test your sound in, a, in, in your video, too? Um, okay, I'm here. I just sent hey, a message Mona. now saying I'm running late. Hi, everybody. Hi there. Okay, so, so uh, I, I sent what, a message saying I'm running a bit late. Okay, so when 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 will you join? Um, I think hopefully it's a meeting like for five minutes. Okay, at work, I'm I'm, I'm okay. not gonna log out. I'm just gonna switch. I'm just gonna mute and then switch my video. That's all. I think after okay. five or ten minutes, I should be good. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, is that okay? So you is are from good? food poetry. Yes, you are from food poetry, correct? That is correct, and I'm in corporate catering. In corporate catering? Yes. Fantastic. All right, let me just see here.
Is everything good? Yes, no. Thank you so much, Mona. Thank I you. have uh, I have your 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 bio and your the questions that I can uh, ask. Thank you so much. Okay. Awesome. You can join Thank us you. a little later. And then Leslie, I also have uh, your intro and uh, some questions that you will take. So, and then uh, Janine, yours are coming through right now. So let me just see awesome. here. Awesome. Yours are coming through. Let me just download it. Thank you, brother. Okay, so it's just going to be a fun. Uh, um, then, uh, so I'll introduce everybody, and then from there, Janine, because uh, then from your side, how do you want the angle of this to go? Sure. So I'm a guest, so it's quite difficult for me to prescribe to you guys. Remember, you know this forum. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, I, I can't tell you what to do. I mean, I've been asked. It's not paying. It's. I, I literally wanted to just inspire people that were dialing in, to mm -hmm. say, in tough times. You know, um, I've been in the hospitality industry and we're talking leadership from what I understand. Yeah? Yes, yes, From what yes. I understand. Um, and I was asked to speak for 30 minutes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. From what I was asked to do. Yes. So, so I, I so, don't know if you yeah. can that question. I'm sorry. I... Oh, no, no, no. That's fine. No, thank you so much for giving me that. So what I'll do is, because I've got your, 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 your bio here. So I'm going to just uh, read just a few of, a, a bit of it, just the beginning part, right? Let me just see, because it's a... Uh, I'll just do the beginning part. Okay, so which part would you like for me to do? There is a lot. Well, exactly. So that's why you can't just do the beginning part because again, then like there's some parts. Yes, yes. Hey, Paul. Now, do you see it? it it's it's going it's it's quite a lot. Okay, we'll do. I'll do everything. I'll do everything. <laughs> Level, right. There's a reason we have Janine Hills on here. There's a reason yes. we have Janine Hills on here. Please don't Most mess it up. <laughs> I'm no. I'm not. I'm not. Not at all. Okay. All right. So let, let me go ahead and uh, start just uh, about to start it on Facebook. And then once I begin it on Facebook, then uh, we can go ahead and uh, yeah. Thank you, the, the for, webinar. for that background support. Okay. I can see everybody <laughs> can think like, okay. All right. She's, she's an old duck, but hey, she's done a couple of things. Eh? So, uh... <laughs> all right. Um, I've got it. I've got it. Let's go here. So, you know, Leslie, I'm very, I mean, Leslie and Lebo, I mean, I'm very interactive. So I don't, mm -hmm. you know, I've been like spewing a whole lot of stuff down, to be honest with you. It's yeah. not about hearing my voice. I mean, I couldn't think of anything worse, but it's a matter of just sharing. So I don't mind if, mm -hmm. you know, it, I, I stopping. I think what I, I'll cover the guts of it and then I'll stop and I'll say, okay, are there any questions? And then let's play around with stuff. I think, Perfect. I think it's, yeah. Fantastic. It's, too much okay. download. It's, Let's find out what other people want and need this time, mm. yeah? Mm. Okay. Okay, awesome. All right. Um, it's just about to start the Facebook one, and then it's a preparing. It should be live in a few. Smiles, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I told you you're famous. You see, you make us all look <laughs> <laughs> Hello guys, uh, welcome to another Essay Chefs session and uh, as we've been doing, you know, since lockdown began is to try and inform you with things that are pertinent to you, pertinent to your career and uh, just about everything in your life because being a chef or being you know part of SA Chefs Association you know it doesn't mean that uh, you're just focused on food there's many things we've spoken here about recruitment we've spoken here about the type of breakfast you need to have as a champion so um, what we do here is try bring you information that you can use and today is no different so let me just get some of the house rules out of the way um right there on facebook please make sure you ask as many questions as possible let us know where you are joining us from because we are bringing this info for you so we've got uh, you know um our favorites from sa chefs and i'll introduce you to them and then we've got 
an amazing guest. So we told you we'll bring the experts to you. Remember, SA Chefs Association has been, you know, here for over 40 years, helping people in the industry, you know, get to the next level. Well, if you are a leader or we're thinking of becoming a leader, this is what you need to listen to today. So welcome, everybody. It is um, uh, Wednesday, right? I call Wednesday Winner's Day. And we are four days away from Women's Day. So to all the women that have dialed in, you know what? Happy Women's Day to you. Enjoy it and uh, make sure that uh, you take your time off because I know during lockdown, you're not just a mother now, you're also a teacher, you know, you're also um, uh, everything else, you know, except being a woman relaxed getting pampered. So take the time on the 9th and have yourself some fun. Today, as I said, we're speaking leadership. So I'm asking the question to you right there on Facebook. What is the good definition of leadership? Looking at it here, according to bestjobsinterviews.com, they say the general definition of leadership is leadership is the ability to influence a group towards the achievement of goals. Leadership is not uh, a one-size-fits-all approach, but a matter of adapting your approach to best fit a specific situation. So we will find out from you there on Facebook, what is your definition? As I said, I'm not traveling alone. I've got, uh, you know, powerhouses right here from, uh, first of all, uh, SA Chefs. And uh, I know you know him, uh, um, uh, Leslie Jacobs. We've got Leslie right here. Uh, you know him. So I'll get to just introduce you to him in a little bit, just so you can uh, get to hear from him uh, yet again, right? And uh, what I want to find out from you, Leslie, is, uh, as I greet you, is uh, obviously from your side, how important has uh, being a good leader been for you, you know? And uh, what does leadership uh, really mean to you? If we can just start it off with you like that. How you doing, oh. Leslie? Very well in your level. Nice to see you guys. And uh, it's, it's uh, quite daunting to have Janine on the same screen. Um, <laughs> When, uh, <laughs> when I did an MBA, Janine, we actually did some of your studies, some of your stuff that you did. So it was, um, it, it's really nice to be here with you as well. So quite a privilege, yeah. I must say. Now you're telling but, my age, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Botox works, yeah. <laughs> Lebo, I think, um, I think from, uh, from a personal point of view, you know, having had uh, good leaders lead me and guide me has definitely helped me become who I am today. And, and in, a, in the chef's community, it's, it's more a mentor that you link to than an actual leader because chefs move around so quickly that you have to latch yeah. onto somebody to actually see where they go, how they do it. And um, I must tell you that my mentor that I had is still one of my two best friends. And I can pick up the telephone any day and just say, chef, yeah. I've got a problem. Um, what do I need to do? How do I deal with the situation? Mm -hmm. and, and definitely leadership, you know, it's so easily assigned to an older person, but, but there are fantastic young leaders around as well. And um, mm -hmm. it's something that we need to tap into. And uh, with what's, what's happen, happening currently with the, the whole COVID situation, if you can't lead, at least find a good follower to uh -huh. come with you or follow a good mentor. That's, that's the, yeah. the best thing that, that I can possibly say at this stage. Latch onto somebody. Internet is making it so easy for us to latch onto somebody to follow what they've been doing. Um, yes. And, and it, it's, yeah, the, the best way I can describe it is just if you, if you know that you're not a good leader, yeah. become a good follower. If you know that you're not a good follower, the other way around and, and vice versa, I'm confusing myself. But it, it's, it's just so important to just have a goal and to, to follow somebody because I promise yeah. you, there's always someone better out there than yourself. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Leslie. But we will dive deeper into the um, uh, conversation. And a little later, I'll also introduce you uh, to someone from uh, Food Poetry who um, is also joining us and uh, will share some tips herself. But our special guest, ladies and gentlemen, Janine Hills, the founder and CEO of Janine Hills Authentic Leadership and founder of Vuma Reputation Management. Um, Janine's extensive business knowledge, skill, and intricate understanding of reputation management are the outcome of over 38 years ex of experience across various sectors of the industry. She has 10 years of experience within the hospitality industry, having worked from Southern Sun and Sun International. She has also worked at Vodacom, Prime Movie, a division of Prime Media, and has sat on the boards of Kaiser Chiefs, Sturkey Neko Home Entertainment, and Sturkey Neko Licensing. 
Janine was a former head of group communications for First National Bank's internal and external communications division. She was a founding member and part of the iconic team that drove and built the innovation of FNB's EPACs and First Rand Group. She was extremely involved in the formulation and the implementation of the multi-brand strategy, internal communications and e-commerce initiatives of the financial services group. Um, Janine Hill's passion for integrity and trust in business relationships is the foundation upon which she launched the Vuma Reputation Management in 2005. She believes trust is key to improving business relationships with all stakeholders and that it must be supported and enhanced by integrity in business practices, including transparency, discipline, accountability, and fairness. Janine believes in uh, being consistent, sincere, responsible, reliable, committed, clear, and steady, and maintaining effective communication with all stakeholders at all levels in good times and bad. She values an opportunity to share with clients the fruits of nearly four decades of business experience, particularly her understanding of the principles of sound reputation management and good corporate governance. To help businesses fill skills gap in reputation management and crisis control processes, she has built a culinary diverse group of aligned partners who understand Africa and have years of experience in these areas. Janine grew Vuma Reputation Management into an African company with global potential before embarking on her new journey with Janine Hill's authentic leadership. In her new role as founder and CEO of Janine Hill's Authentic Leadership, Janine will be sharing the skills and knowledge she acquired over the years with the best of South Africa's executive leadership, c, c and boards. Janine honed her skills under the mentorship of some of South Africa's great leaders and CEOs, such as Shamil Joseph of Vodacom, Michael Jordan of Ebucks FNB, uh, Joanne Jaffe, uh, founder of Hewlett Packard, Paul Harris, founder of First Rand Group, and Ron Stringfellow of Southern Sun, to name but a few. Janine champions gender and uh, pay parity. She is passionate in her drive to ensure that women's voice in, uh, is taken seriously in business and in boardrooms. When you see people as equal, you create opportunities that are equal together. This is about equal opportunity, unquote, Janine Hills from Authentic Leadership. Janine has uh, provided world advisory services to at least 50 JSE-listed companies, such as uh, the JSE, Anglo Coal, Sibanye Stillwater, SAPI, Cecil, Re 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 Robices, um, as well as government and select SOEs like AXA, SAA, PIC, and Brand South Africa. She has operated with, uh, within at least 10 African countries and also advised multinational companies internationally. Most recently, Janine's contributed the, chat, the chapter on effective crisis communication for the recently published ebook management organization during the COVID-19 vortex. Board and directorships. She was uh, the board member of Brand South Africa from 2016 to 2019 in the oh, international... <laughs> you can stop there, China. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Wow. So as Come I on, said, let's guys, get stuff, man. let's get into it. Come on. As I said, we have an amazing person right here. So please give a digital round of applause to none other than CEO and founder of Janine Hills Authentic Leadership. Hi, Janine. How are you? No, thank you, Lebo. Yeah, I was getting tired. I'm going to say, who's that person at the end of the day? <laughs> <laughs> It's like a bit rough, eh? a bit rough. So but tell so me, me um, yeah, go for it. Your passion for leadership, where did it begin, Janine? Well, you know, it was interesting, this, the Chefs Association discussion, because I think, you know, I think back to the, the, the early days when I was 16 years of age and I walked into my first kitchen. And I remember I was a little youngster in Port Elizabeth and I wanted to work in the hospitality industry. And the first hotel I went into was Holiday Inns. And, and I, you know, for those who might or might not know, but it was the first multiracial um, hotel in our country. And um, 
you know, I was intimidated. I mean, can you just imagine these chefs, you know, with these big knives, you know, and you're 16 years of age, but that's where you have this passion. You want to be in the hospitality industry. I want, I knew that's where I wanted to be. And I had, I loved it. So I walked in there and that was the first intimate, intimate in exchange. And then after I went into matric, that was my first job. I, I started in Holiday Inns as a receptionist and then went straight into banqueting and worked directly in the kitchens, which was a phenomenal experience at the age of 18, you know? So yeah, a good learning curve, but it's following your passion. Uh-huh. So, and then now as you've seen over the years, I think, uh, you know, there's, there's still these questions that linger where they say, is a leader born or is a leader made, you know? Um, what, what, what are your thoughts on that? You know, it's a, it's a lot. I think we are made. I, I think, you, yes, you have some that are, are natural orators, like a, an Obama. He's, a, he's an orator. He's an amazing leader, but he's also an orator. That's a different leadership, you know. Um, there's some people that are natural leaders, but they're quiet leaders. So you don't have to be an orator. Um, but where we are at the moment, you know, I, I think for myself, what I've had to do is I've had great leaders teach me. Some, let me tell you, not great leaders, as in, good people. I've had the rough, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, it hasn't all been <laughs> all pretty. Let me tell you, so I can tell you scary stories as also a woman in business coming through the ranks over the last 38 years uh, that will make you shudder. But it's, it's how you deal with those situations and also learn from those situations. And then when you personally get into a position of leadership, the important part is push that ladder down and allow people to come up with you and pull people you that's the key thing about leadership i think moving forward at any rate for all of us wow uh, really really great i think we'll get into you um your talk just in, in a few uh, moments i just want to introduce our other chef that is joining us um earlier on we heard um uh, from uh, chef lazy jacobs uh, who is uh, started the fbi chefs brand in 2005 and has since uh, seen the brand uh, grow in branches currently in joburg and bloemfontein and he was speaking to what leadership is and what he learned from his nba and then uh, right now we've got Chef Mona Lisa of KwaZulu Natal with a national diploma in culinary arts, history, and advanced diploma in kitchen management. You know, Chef Mona Lisa is the director for food poetry by Chef Mona Lisa, a catering company that provides private dinners, cooking classes, and corporate catering. Hey, Mona, how are you? <laughs> oh, hi. Hi, thank you so much for the introduction. Good, how are you, I'm Devil? Very, very well. Um, so, um, Mona, it really must, uh, owning your own company must really test you from a leadership perspective because <laughs> you're the worker and also you are the boss. That is correct. It, it does really test me a lot. I mean, it, it, I think like, having experience within the industry helped for me to also branch over and start my own company. So I think for me, I took experience um, um, that I that I got from corporate catering, hotels and restaurants, etc., and apply a few things that I've learned, and yeah, that's that's how I'm I'm running things in terms of uh, leadership. Nice. Fantastic. And um, I'm gonna go back now to our guest speaker. You know, uh, Janina. Uh, right now, basically, we are in crisis, and this is your specialty: crisis management. And what would leaders now be faced with and what would you suggest as, uh, you know, uh, tools to go to or best practice to really deal with the current crisis that we're facing where bosses have to let people go or they have to really rethink and rework their strategies, which they planned in January. And now they have to really start focusing in a different direction. Right. You know, Lebo, I mean, my heart goes out to people that own hotels and, and restaurants, and it, it, it really is a shocker. I mean, this is something as a curveball that, I mean, we never expected this. Nobody expected this. So, so you know, I think there's a couple of things. We, not only have we been hit with an economic crisis, and I think let's be real here. Um, we, we've, we've, the last 10 years, we were just, I don't know if you remember, 10 years ago, we were really just coming right as a society and as a country. And, you know, I, I won't mention presidents' names, but 
generally that's how it's kind of gone for us as a country and even as a continent really. Um, so we, we were smacked really hard the last 10 years. It was nine years really, but it's gone into 10 now. And so as we were starting to, okay, all right, now we've got a new presidency. We got, we kind of starting to shuttle into place. All of a sudden this COVID thing hit. And of course now we've started seeing corruption. We've started seeing everything else. And unfortunately that leads to a whole lot of other things. And so, <sighs> You know, I have a very simple philosophy and I know that people might not agree with it. And I'm sorry for those where people don't agree with it. But, you know, somebody said, I spoke to a previous CEO this morning um, of CEO uh, of Celsi. And he said to me, Jose DeSantis, I used to work with him at Vodacom. And he said to me, you know, oh, you know, you, sometimes you irritate me, Jenny, because you don't, you're so, you're so like happy. How do, how do you, how come you're so positive? It was this morning. But, you know, Lebo, I believe Yes, we are in a crisis. We absolutely are. And we've got to do what we've got to do. And I'm going to give you a couple of tips and a couple of guidelines. But what is important is to maintain our personal reputations. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why did I agree to do this? Why? Because why did I agree today? There's no fee, there's no whatever. But it's my time. It's my value. It's, the, it's my IP that I'm sharing. And I mean, Leslie, you'll understand that. Mona Lisa, you'll understand that as well as your IP. You're sharing knowledge. But if we don't, in this time, give back... And, 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 and come together as citizens and come together as a nation and as a people, you know, Libra, what have we really got? Yeah. So, so, you know, you look at yourself and you say, what part can I really play? Can I really make a difference? Yes, you can. You can make a huge difference because your sheer attitude of just making someone smile when you walk into a Woolies or a spa or going to support a restaurant. Yes. Right now, you can't have a bottle of wine. You can't have that cocktail, with, but you can, you know, order a fake cocktail. What do you call them? Mock cocktails. We, we, we can support. So it's about a mentality for us to say, listen, how do I do X, Y, and Z? Um, I know a very good friend of mine, uh, Amanda Dambuza, who's the chairperson of Grinrod, as an example. And she's personally been sponsoring and assisting some of the chefs, some of the people, some of the restaurants that she's been going to. It's... A, I think at this time, what this COVID has taught us as leaders is this is the time where there's a balance between humanitarian and economic. And we can't wait for government. Government's not running my life, with all due respect. I happen to be a citizen. I pay my taxes. I do what I do. But at the end of the day, I'm a proud South African. So what role do I play? I make sure that people around me are safe, secure, I make sure that I create a job where I can and jobs where I can. Um, I recently sold Vuma Reputation Management, a fully empowered company, fully transformed. And it was the first company that really had moved into the correct direction. And it was the, for a reason to lead the way. And, and it's just naturally flowed now. Now it's a natural reason in the sector. The thing is, each one of us can make a difference. But what we've got to do is we've got to change so simple things, simple example level. Just this morning, my trainer talks to me this morning. I train, still do my, insist on doing my electronic training on my laptop. She turns around and she's, <laughs> she says to me, you know, I've got these Americans, I'm busy training, but they're so different and they don't like this and they don't like that. I said, ah, 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 hey, hey, stop right there. You are learning a new skill. Yes, but, but I said, no, no, there's no buts. You have got a South African market. Open your eyes open your eyes. You are earning a different revenue stream from a different market. All of a sudden, you've gone global. So what I'm saying is, let's, take, you've got, let's say you've got a lovely restaurant in Parkhurst or Parktown North or in Santon. And I have to just tell you, I moved out of Parktown North. I now live in Santon. And I tell you, I really miss my nice cuisine. There's nothing really nice around here. I'm kind of missing it. I really, I'm honest with you. And you know, what I miss is people come, the chef coming out of the kitchens. Uh, I, I miss the friendly home. You, you want to be well, you want to feel comfortable. And I think our chefs have got to step out. I think our, our maitre d's, our service, we've got to care a bit more. And if you care about your consumer and you care about yourself and you value people more and you start respecting yourself more, love yourself more, then you'll care about your customer more. And you know, I love food. Trust me, I love food. That's why I have to train. So, so I love tasting different things and I love going to the experience. You think I love being cooped up here in an apartment the whole time? No. But every time I've ordered a meal, 
so far in my experience that it's been shocking, shocking. I, I went to a restaurant the other day, I drove all the way out to Kailami and a friend of mine said, oh, they got great breakfast. Lebo, it was a shocker, shocker. You, do you see what I'm saying? We've got to change the way we think. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I, uh, just to, to just uh, touch on some of the nuggets, you know, of uh, mental nutrition you've just dropped in us there. First of all, personal reputation. Very yeah. important. I love that one. And um, there's a comment also on Facebook from uh, Mashomola. Like, she says, he says, say that again. We can't wait for the government. Together we can make a difference, change attitudes and business models. Really agreeing with that. And uh, I just want to find out just from our other two speakers quickly, what are their thoughts just from what you've just said, Liz? Um, I think she's dropped quite a lot of, uh, you know, basically that's a whole course you know, concatenated into just a small little tip. Listen, I, I feel so motivated. <laughs> you, you, it's working, Janine, it's working. <laughs> um, but 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 it's it's very true. I experienced the same thing this morning. I went to I went into a coffee shop. I can make my own very nice coffee in my office, but mm -hmm. I decided to support local. My father always mm -hmm. said support local, local will support you. And um, I, I went to a coffee shop this morning and I asked around how's it going is it picking up is it not picking up and the attitude from the people serving is not the attitude that we should be having at this stage it mm -hmm. shouldn't be an attitude of it's going so bad there, there should be a couple of new opportunities popping up left right and center that we need to tap mm -hmm. into and when i spoke to the person actually roasting the coffee because they, they do their own roasting he said to me he figured out that he can he's, he's channeling his coffee and his distribution into different areas now and all of a sudden his business is making more money in a mm. different area, which you never tapped into. And I think yeah. just, just what Janine said, if, if we don't adapt, it's adapt or die at this stage. And unfortunately, you know, if you go into the restaurants, which we're all scared to do because uh, the consumer trust or, or confidence is very low at this stage going into a restaurant, um, you know, people should be made to, to feel at home um, mm -hmm. and it should feel safe. It should not feel forced. And at this stage, I think we, we are being forced yeah. to to be forceful as us you know yeah. as hospitality workers so so i think if people can just soften their the approach to their customers yeah. i think it'll really make it a lot nicer that bad breakfast that you need had could have mm. been a bad breakfast but a very nice experience very thanks so um, much and and i think we just need to turn that attitude just slightly as hospitality workers Thank you so much. I like that. And uh, from you, Mona Lisa, I've got something here. Um, uh, Janine also touched on something big, you know. Um, I think it, it relates to that quote, don't ask what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. You know, that is you correct. mentioned it so nicely when you said, what role do I play? So, Mona, what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know what? I, I like what Janine mentioned. The role that we are currently playing as, as chefs right now is to bring the restaurant to your home. There's a lot of chefs that are sitting at home. A lot of them. I mean, we could be catering from comfort food to, to fine dining, irrespective of the cuisine. But the fact that I'm, I'm not going to be discouraged, but I can go and prepare a great meal for a family of six or ten and still keep safe and adhere to the, to the COVID-19 rules. What more could you ask for? You know what I'm saying? Um, not everybody can, can do that, but I think for those that are able to do so, I think this is another way of solving a problem within the hospitality industry because there are people that are preferring to be at home. I mean, if Leslie has a great oven and, 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 and uh, sorry, a gas stove, I'm sure Amona Lee. All right, we apologize for that. I think uh, her network uh, was not all right. Maybe Janine, she needs to contact some of your friends there at Vodacom. She could have been still connected. <laughs> all right, well, after that uh, little joke right there, um, Janine, I have a quote here. I just want your thoughts on it quickly. It says, great leaders don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. It's never about the role. It's always about the goal. Your thoughts? Yeah, you know, I think it's a, it, at the moment, look, our goals, it's very hard. I, I, I think it's very hard for anybody to look at goals at the moment. I think it's very, 
it's survival right at the moment. People are in survival mode. So we're looking at how do you retain staff or how do I retain my restaurant? How do I retain my hotel? You know, so it's, it's practical things that we've got to look at how, but what I do say, there's a couple of things that really from a business and a practicality point of view, and that's when if we talk about authentic leaders. So I, I believe that right now one has to, if one runs a restaurant or a hotel, be, be, be honest with yourself. If your occupancies drop right down, then unfortunately you have to be real. And you have to unfortunately do the necessary as in reducing staff. So it's a, it's a, it's a do it, carry as much as you can or do um, the necessary, we can bring in consultants or you can bring in uh, casual workers and you can, so try do what you can to carry. But what I would also do is try and up your game. So up your game as in shifting more business through. So, so I love what Mona Lisa is saying is diversify your business. You know, some of us, unfortunately, don't see the opportunities unless it's literally put in front of you. I'm saying if you're a restaurant, you've got an entire suburb that normally would come to you. Start going to them, just as Mona Lisa is suggesting. You know, um, I think the biggest people that have taken strain during this COVID period has actually been a lot of mothers, mothers trying to be working, that are working mothers, teaching their children on online schooling, looking after the husband that's sitting, sitting working, and then if one sees breakfast, lunch, and supper, and don't laugh at me because this is a common thing that seems to be happening, yeah? And in that- No, it's me, it's me, it's me. Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't realize it was you, eh? Um, so, so now we know the culprits. But, but the wives are really struggling, you know? So, so why, now you want me to cook dinner? Are you crazy? Why I should be dialing up my chef, yeah? Deliver my menu, deliver to my house. I'd got a pre-planned meal three times a week and, 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 and take that off. You're saving on your petrol at the moment. You're saving on a whole lot of additional costs. We know that. And, and you can reduce some of your insurances at the moment. So they put that into making your life run a little bit easier and hire your chef. I would do it. Um, and it makes my life easier. Otherwise, you actually don't eat properly. I find I'm so busy on these Zoom calls. I am started on Zoom calls from 7 o'clock until 8 o'clock at night. And then I start eating. That's not healthy. If I've got my meal in my fridge already prepared then I have, a, a, I'm keeping my dietary, I'm keeping my health, and I'm keeping my spirit up. So it's about the positive attitude, healthy food. But as a business, let's make sure we think out of the box. And if you diversify your business, you might find where you had a slice of a pie, you might have that spread much wider. So, so your pie might become bigger and bigger and bigger over a period of time. And where you think you employ 10 staff, you now employ 30 staff over a period of time. So a diversification, I call it multiple revenue streams level. So, so I learned this at eBucks. We, we had 12 revenue streams as the e-commerce initiative that allowed us to survive. So if your business, what that allows, if your business has got multiple revenue streams, if you've got one or two that go down, which is natural in any market, one goes down, the other one goes up. The one goes down and it, and it fluctuates like that, which allows you the sustainability at any business should be starting to work towards that. Um, Janine, what I'm hearing is don't put your eggs in one basket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, diversify. And I, I, I like how... You know, first of all, you're asking business leaders as because sometimes passion does cloud a reality for people who are believing that by starting a business, they are following their passion and yeah. uh, sometimes forget that uh, you have to face the music. I really like the line where you spoke about be honest, be real, face the music. If you have to start uh, cutting hours or, you know, if you're not thinking creatively and what I'm hearing here is that you really now start, you need to start being creative rather than just you, because we get into a treadmill, right? Of this is what I do. This is what my business does. You know, I just do this. I really do not need to do anything else. And when you watch another a competitor do something else, you're like, these guys are wasting time. You know, I just mm -hmm. sell pizzas, for example. So yeah. Um, yeah. 
let me just uh, touch with Mona quickly because we got, we got cut off. Mona, um, from what she's just ended off with, uh, you know, talking about multiple revenue streams uh, and try new things. Um, how, yeah. how is that working for uh, your business? You know, um, thank you so much for your question, Lebo. I'll be very honest with you. It's doing much better compared to um, um, before um, lockdown. You know, a lot of people are, are, are willing to try out new things um, and they're comfortable with, with chefs um, um, cooking at their own homes. And what I do on my side, if, if I'm, for example, I'm in Santon, I'll have somebody that's in Lyndhurst or I'll have somebody else that's in, that's in um, Centurion, et cetera. So we, um, it's not only me alone, but I'm able to, to, to place other shifts somewhere else. So for me, it's not only about me um, um, getting income only to myself, but also sharing with others. So, so that's, that's how I'm, I'm doing it. Fantastic. Yeah, I think it's, it's such a that, great thing. It is. It is. Thank you, Leslie. Thanks a lot, Liz. I think that's a very good thing to to spread your business and not let it just depend on you. Because if it just depends on you, Mona, what happens when you are ill? You know, what happens when you want a break? That's this is when burnout uh, becomes uh, something that will happen. You know. So yeah. really, really good there to try and really spread yourself and have others that you train and get them to your level. And then now yes. basically you're franchised yourself. I think that is something uh, <laughs> quite Love great. It. Love that it. is something quite great. And then Les, from your side, Leslie, um, with the mm. FBI, you know, how, how have you dealt with the current challenges that we are facing now? Lebo, I think, I think it's so scary for training providers out there at this stage. You must remember that all students are expected to do industry placements or to do experiential training, either for a period of six months, 12 months, or 18 months. To place somebody at this stage is, it's easier to book an international holiday than what it is to place somebody at this stage in hotels or restaurants. Um, so we've got, a, we've got a tremendous problems with, with students all over the country that are ready to head into industry, but there is no industry at this stage. It is so sad to say, but there really is no industry. So we are trying to encourage the students, make use of the SA Chefs Association, make use of the World Chefs Forum, and try and better yourself by by going through the the designation process and uh, assigning a a qualification to your name or or multi-skinning yourself at this stage. Um, yeah. so, so for us at this stage, it's not, I can't all of a sudden get another 50 or 100 students. It's not going to happen. Let's be very honest and frank about it. So mm-hmm. what, we're doing, what we're doing at this stage, instead of focusing our attention on other revenue streams, we're trying to help the students upskill and multi-skill themselves. So mm-hmm. if a student, for example, just does a culinary arts program, we're trying to get shorter programs in food and beverage services or something that we don't offer on a daily basis like accommodation services and reception services and operations, which we all qualify to offer, but we don't do it because it's not our main revenue stream. So by offering that to them at a cost price, you know, at least we're helping them stay busy for the next six months so that when they do enter industry, at least we're sending a better hospitality worker into industry instead of just a qualified culinarian. So that, that is how we're trying to, to deal with it at this stage. It's not very profitable, I must be honest, to run something at cost, but we are maintaining reputation in industry, firstly. We are making sure that we are delivering on the commitment to the students to try and find them employment and, um, and also to, to keep the international market open and sending the good South Africans out there to go work and to bring back the skills and the money to our beautiful country. It's, it's, it's just so difficult at this stage to be a business owner. Um, it really is difficult. But if you don't find the good in the bad at this stage, you might as well close down. I, I really see my father as a great business mentor to myself. And he used to teach me, you know, have a hundred ideas. Only one has to work. But don't, have, don't stop having ideas. And, yes. and, and just write down that idea. Follow up on the idea. Really work with it until it's dead and you can't work on it anymore. And then move on to the next one. But just have that list of, of possibilities and opportunities. So we're trying to create opportunities at this stage. We are not creating dollars, I promise you, but we are creating opportunities. And I think post-COVID, that is going to benefit the students a lot more than just somebody that qualified on an average uh, I, I say average, but a basic culinary arts qualification that is offered so widely in our, in our country. Thanks a lot, Leslie. You remind me of a quote by Seneca where he says, next time you, you, you encounter misfortune, you know, don't say this is misfortune, but rather say um, to bear this worthily is good fortune, you know? Makes so sense. we need to 
bear this, you know, very worthily and use it to come out of this place so strong, you know, rather than come out of it as a victim. There's uh, some comments that I'm seeing here on Facebook. Enoch Makanga says, great discussion watching you from Impact Chefs Academy in Nairobi, Kenya. Wow. Um, uh, uh huh. That's how far we are. That's how far we are. And then we've also, Matlomula says, let's also practice the 5P method. Proper planning prevents power planning. So nice. planning and creating good ideas and easy menus. Collaboration all the way. And how, how, how is planning very important in this time, Janine? You know, it's crucial. Is that, and, and, you know, South Africans, we're a bit naughty. And Africans, as a continent, we very naughty, mm. okay? And I mean this quite emphatically. And what I mean by this is that we're very good talkers. We love talking, okay? But we're not so good at putting the plans in place and then implementation, yeah? I think, that's, I think I've got a, a, a general yes, okay? Oh, no, so what, yeah, you're right. It, it's, it's, we've got to learn to shift that in our mindset. So the time for thinking as a leader and as a business owner you've got to take that time out sit down quietly put the kids to bed do what you've got to put the girlfriend away <laughs> lock her away for an hour and say listen leave me alone i need to think please all right please all right but you need that space to think is important put some plans in place for a week a month a year write it down have the plans and then you've got to actually drive those implementation plans it's the same, you know, I learned as a, as, a, as a really working in the kitchens with the chefs and I was even in Austria in the chefs kitchens there and, and, and in Switzerland. And, and, you know, the best thing you learned was preparing your mise en place. So come on, man, we learn this. We learn the basics of, of, of your preparation. I think the chefs are the greatest preparers. So you have to do that if you're a business owner, but they don't. You see, people get caught up in the passion. And trust me, I'm one of the most passionate individuals and I've had to learn the discipline as a person. Trust me, I've had to. Lebo and banking taught that to me. Yeah. Really, really. Paul Harris was, I was at Paul Harris's side for four years and that was my MBA. And, and yeah. when you learn that you've got a passion and he always said one simple thing to me, build the business case. If the business mm. case doesn't work, don't do it. All right. So we have to take the time out. A lot of people, especially entrepreneurs, jump into things so quickly, boof, boof. But do you realize that you've got to know a little bit about legal? Do you need to know a little bit about HR? You need to know a little bit about social economics, the social environment, the culture, the community in which you work at. You know, in Africa, we each one of us are unique as a country and we have to integrate. We have to respect each other. And we have to learn to integrate. So understanding those platforms and putting your mise en place together helps you prevent a potential crisis. We couldn't have prevented this. We didn't know this. But what you can now do is build multiple streams in your business, prepare for something, it's an additional eventuality, and start yeah. being creative in your business to create something new in your environment with your passion. Definitely. Just, uh, Lebo, um, if I may say something, please. Yeah. I, I think it's so important what you just mentioned. You know, a lot of times we look at organizational behavior and organizational culture, and that is always something we had to fall back on to try and see <laughs> what culture we're living in or what the organization is doing. But at this yeah. stage, there is no blueprint. Mm. So as a leader, if you don't listen and interact at this stage, you are definitely heading in the wrong direction because yeah. none of us could have foreseen this. We, we talk yep. about kitchens with 80 staff in it that's working on a rotational basis with three or four people in there. Um, if we don't change that, because at the moment there is no organization behavior or culture, everyone is just scared. Um, I mean, the, the average South African, it's a known fact, is two salaries away from bankruptcy. Um, we, need to, we need to try and help and guide in that sense. So as a leader, I, I think if people can just... I don't even know, Janine, maybe you can tell us where to go to read up on this or how to face yeah. or how to deal with this because mm. it is it's yeah. totally, totally dark for all of us at this stage. Yeah. yeah. Um, Janine, can yeah. I, just before you answer that, can I also just get the question from uh, Master Chef Hassan? He's had his hand up for a while now. Um, uh, Hassan, can you go off mute uh, and then uh, please ask your question to Janine?
Ah, there he is. Hassan? Ah, there he is. Hello, how are you? Hello, Hassan. We are good. Hi, Hassan. I am fine, madam. I'm fine. My team work. Every my good uh, good uh, friend is my uh, my uh, my my today from uh, the cook uh, the the audit. Uh, all experience very very good. Uh, my my testing all the Zoom. The Zoom very very good now. Thank you very much, uh, Hassan. All right, so guys, uh, we're going to move over now to try and obviously go to try and uh, close it off and get your final um, uh, thoughts. But uh, let's just go to you, Janine. You know, going into the next two months, I think it's mm -hmm. between, you know, moving away from peak and everything cooling down. What should I be doing as a business leader? What should I be doing as a leader of myself? You know, because I think before we lead others, we lead ourselves, you know. And if you lead mm -hmm. yourself very badly, when you get to a, a position of leadership, yeah. you will not... Uh, you know, lead very successfully. What should I be thinking about and working on right now? You know the, the phrase where they say summer bodies are built in winter. So definitely great businesses are also built, you know, during this struggle here. So what should people be thinking about? Let me use spot on. You know, right now it's survival, but it's also sowing the seeds. <laughs> so we're sowing the seeds now for something greater. That's the key thing. So Bring your diversification in now. That means sitting quietly and looking at the creative side of what you can do differently. And if you don't know what to do, then ask a couple of people. And, and it is about saying slow steps. Don't think Rome was built in the day. Slow steps. And don't get frustrated. Don't get angry. And the big thing is don't be too uh, held back by technology. So the big thing is building one's personality, building one's personal reputation. The, we have so much access to, to, to uh, technology now and everyone's embracing it so phenomenally well. We mustn't expect customers to be coming to us. We need to be calling customers to come, be coming to us. So the, I think the whole, you know, the celebrity chef, the really popping out, how do you remain top of mind? So if you were a, a restaurant in a local area, I think one needs to start really dominating that that local suburb that local area that's that that region or that province with your cuisine and people need to hear about it so so the dial ins like you've got today are phenomenal we need to hear how we can do things differently talk about it share invite people in for tastings talk about your new menu keep me excited so top of mind is crucial. The other thing is keep me excited because my RAND is not going to spread, you know, go very far or my spend on my wallet's not going to go very far. So how do I spend that wallet more selectively only rather than only just going out on a birthday? If you, if you, you know, really excite me and, and, and keep in touch with me, I will change behavior. So the key thing is building up a reputation. That means leadership. Talk about how, how the good things that you're doing. Don't be afraid about it, but you also need to inculcate yourself into social investment. What do I mean by that is into the community. So if you see people on the, on the side of the road really not having food and people starving, for heaven's sake, do something about it if you're in a position to do it. So you have to give back. Right now, we are undoubtedly in an era where you have to give back. So building that reputation is crucial in a community and then you help people through that journey and people will remember you. Never, ever underestimate paying forward. You never underestimate something like that. Um, and when you give something forward, you, five years later, the biggest family might walk into that restaurant or that hotel and hold the biggest wedding that you've ever had in your entire life. And so never underestimate the person that might have walked in there with a pair of slop, slip slops and a casual shirt. And uh, I think the big thing is don't judge, build commitment, be, hu be human, be human. Um, if someone is starving, share your biscuit with them. But mm. the big thing is keep calm, keep calm, keep centered and make sure that you personally have, make sure that you know the journey that you're going on is centered within yourself and be, be generous, be generous with who you are as a person. 
Oh, thank you so much, Janine. Like, uh, those are pearls of wisdoms that I see that our people that are watching on Facebook are so loving. Um, we've got Debu Khongwako who says 100% accurate. That's all he could say, because I don't think there's any other way we could put it than the way you've just put it. And then um, Joshua, Chef Joshua says, great discussion. Um, I'm watching you live from Uganda, Kampala. Right, so that's already three countries, South Africa, um, Uganda, and Kenya. And then we've got uh, Roy Ishmael Okonji, who says, uh, every bad happening is not a misfortune, but good fortune. He says, great, great discussion. And then Enoch says, oh, Janine, we would like to share this presentation with chefs and hospitality managers from Eastern Africa. Janine, I think you and I just have to do some stuff in Eastern Africa. We need to chat after this. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but what's very important now, as, 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 as we close, guys, um, Liz, I'm going to just touch on you and then come back uh, what is your one motivation right now, Liz, to carry on as a business leader? You know, Janine has just uh, shared, you know, you need to sow the seed right now. You know, I love the inculcate, uh, inculcate yourself into a social investment. And also, uh, slow steps. What is your focus right now as a business leader? I think it's very important to, for, for us, what we can do directly at this stage is we can help people in the situation that I'm in, I can help people learn how to deal with crisis management. Because if you can't think on your feet at this stage in hospitality, you are definitely in for a ride. Um, and as a chef, and being a chef's platform that we're using at this stage, as a chef, you need to make quick decisions. You need to think on your feet constantly the whole day. Um, you, you're not a cook by the time you become a thinker, then you become a manager. And that's when leadership starts kicking in. And I think that that is why we need to upskill ourselves. You know, we learn how to cook, but we don't learn how to manage or how to implement management styles or techniques when it comes to the time that you become an exec chef. So if we can use this time to help people learn how to deal with crisis management, well, because this is what it is. It's a huge crisis. Um, baby steps, baby steps. That's all we can do at this stage, baby steps. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Definitely uh, baby steps. And uh, she also mentions, uh, you know, uh, it's time to be sitting quietly and really looking at the terrain, you know. And uh, she did say some of us are too hasty. The passion just makes us, you know, look for quick gratification. And mm -hmm. in this current, uh, you know, uh, um, terrain that we're working on, really um, being impatient could actually be your, to your detriment. Mona, what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, I just, I just want to quickly say something, just something short is that I think chefs or, or people in the hospitality industry should just remember that we are a need. They must not forget that people need to eat. People need to go to hotels and lodges to go and relax. We are relevant. We are not irrelevant. Um, just to now answer your question. Um, you know what? Everything else that goes with planning, we need to implement. Just like how you need to silence the noise a bit and then go back to your planning. Once you're able to silence the, the noise that is happening on what's happening around us, et cetera, you will be able to focus on what is important right now, which is coming up with solutions on how to solve these problems and how we can also engage again with our customers. Our customers are very important. All of us sitting here, our customers to each other. And I think we need to teach um, our, our, our people in hospitality industry the importance of, of, of customer relations, um, et cetera. I think I've answered your question, I hope. <laughs> but Fantastic. yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. You, you, you've then, really uh, put it beautifully. You've put it beautifully yeah. because basically using yeah. Janine's and using Mona Lisa's at this stage, I just wrote down, you silence the noise to make some <laughs> serious noise. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and yes. you ladies have just summarized it yes. very nicely. Yeah. So, so guys, I'd like to get everybody to do a test with me. All right. Put your hands up like this quickly. Just put your hands up <laughs> like this. I'm going to count everybody on Facebook. Please try it. Try it. Try it. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and count one, two, three. When I get to three, I'm going to say go. When I say go, then you clap just like this. That's it. <laughs> okay. Everybody got the instruction? Everybody have the instruction? 
Fantastic. <laughs> One, two, three. Go. Wait. <laughs> so, so a, ve a very, very, very good example of what leadership is about. You guys followed what I did and not, not what, what I said. 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 And <laughs> I said so well in my instructions that mm. only when I say go, go, you clap. But I didn't say go. I just clapped. And you guys followed me and clapped. And then when I said go, everybody had already clapped. So to every leader listening here today, this is advice to you from me. Watch your actions, not what you say. There's, yeah. a, there's a saying that says, what you are doing speaks so loud. I can't hear what you are saying. Make sure that your actions are speaking the words that you would like people to hear. Janine, final word from you before we close it off. Well, first of all, thank you. And thank you for everybody's time. Everyone is relevant. Um, I, I love each and every one of you for your time, your passion, your love. What I want to say is believe in yourself, most importantly, through these troubled times. See the light. Follow that light and the impossible, impossible will happen. You never know what's around that next corner. And it's a sustainability, believing in yourself, consistency, reliability, and being trustworthy. And I promise you, you will surprise yourself. I've seen it. I'm living proof that I can promise you. Thank you so much uh, to all our speakers for today. Thank you, Janine. It is an honor and a plump pleasing pleasure to have worked with you today. I am going to save this video for myself too. But uh, thank you to Leslie, another awesome time with you, Leslie. You know, you should just be my sidekick, man. We could just do this together, you know? And then uh, Mona Lisa, it was such a pleasure to uh, you. meet you today. And the smile is better than the original Mona Lisa. And, to the guys joining us right there on Facebook, uh, Pauline Jacobs says she is loving what she's seeing. Uh, Roy Ishmael says, uh, hashtag Mona Lisa, we are a need. Thank you, guys. <laughs> You've made my afternoon. Kenya, we are in. And the last comment from Deboho says, leadership, watch your actions, not what you are saying to everybody watching from all over the world because SA Chefs Association has got its fingers in every pot. Thank you so much for watching today. If I could just leave you with one uh, pearl that I got from our guest speaker today. She says, be honest, be real, face the music, and don't forget, build that business case. It's been another plum pleasing pleasure from me, the Mood Engineer and SA Chefs Association. From all of us, it's goodbye. <laughs>